there's other ways and other methods. This is just from our experience. So, um, as a start, we have to um, mix very different words. We have to, uh, m not all, but many of the, of the open source projects are, are community-run projects, and then we have the customer projects. We are very company-oriented. Uh, they have a business goal, they had uh, tightly defined budgets, um, they have a set of uh, acceptance criteria, and they have all kind of constraints in terms of budget, time, quality, scope. Um, uh, they tend to be very well defined, uh, even if they're not clear of, of they can change over time. Then the community projects are uh, very heterogeneous. They, they, they are very different uh, from one another. Um, some will have timelines, some will just release when they are done. Uh, there's usually no defined budget. Um, they do have a set of acceptance criteria, but they're usually very fluid. They, they're not uh, defined a priori. Um, they have a constraint in quality but uh, there is no, for example, usually a um, constraint in uh, scope or a constraint in, in terms of uh, deadlines. They're usually released when they are done and they depend on, on what uh, the maintainers can do. And of course, every project is very different and you have to get to know each one. So. With that in mind, you have to, uh, when, when you're working I with open source projects, it's always a balancing act. Uh, so you have a budget spreadsheet that you have to keep an eye on, and you have to keep an eye on the, uh, the project, the commit log of the projects. And when you talk to each, you have to adapt uh, your talking points, your, your mindset, in a way. So, uh, and very, as I say there, it's overgeneralizing, but the community focus is on features in, in code quality, uh, not in the budget, they don't care about that. If you, if you start talking about money to a community project, you'll probably lose them. That's just the way it is, uh, and it's fine. Uh, and for a customer, the focus is on having a deliverable, having a product, uh, keeping an eye on the cost, and they won't care about what the maintainer of a community-run project demands. Yes, so, so you have to balance those different needs. And our job as project managers for these kind of companies is to preserve the health of both. We want our uh, customers to be successful, we want our community projects to be successful. Uh, we need both. So, we want to fulfill the customer goals and we want to contribute to open source at the same time. Uh, in Corabora, we have a motto, it's uh, open first, and uh, a, a mission which is accelerate the adoption of open source technologies, methodologies, and philosophy. We really believe in that and we want to advance that. So, we want to contribute to uh, open source, we want to get better at it, uh, we want to make a profit uh, because that's the way we can continue to make our contributions. Um, and we want to be fair to our customers and to the community. We want to be transparent to both of them. and We want to be open about what we do. So, how we do it? Um, we want to be public by default. When a developer comes up with a new idea, a new uh, a new tool, uh, usually when it's a new developer in the company, the, the, she will ask, okay, uh, should I push it, should I, uh, I, I have this in a private repo, uh, our answer is, okay, we have a GitLab, make it a public repository, get feedback from other people, not only in the company, but outside. And that will show, it, show its worth. So be public by default. Um, Always insist on working in the open. Try to be uh, open with your pull requests, your merge requests, uh, the reviews. 
if you cannot do it, demand good reasons. So you have to ask, no, why is it open? You, you have to ask, and, and very firmly, when, when it's closed and why that it is. There may be good reasons, uh, like product release, uh, companies don't want to alert others, alert competitors about what they're doing, uh, but there has to be a reason. By default, you have to work in the open. That includes the code repository, includes the bug tracker, um, whenever possible, when you're working with uh, upstream projects, use their bug tracker. Um, use, we you do use an internal one, but that's for internal project tracking, which is, yeah, just taking care of milestones and of our internal project plan. And it, it, it won't usually have important uh, technical information that it's not available elsewhere. So, if we do our job well, we can demonstrate the power of open source to customer. We deal with, uh, I would say, 60% uh, to 40% of customers that are not acquainted with open source. Uh, if we do our job well, they will get used to that and they will demand more open source in other projects in, with other companies. So, uh, it's, uh, we started working with big companies like, uh, it's six, seven years ago, and we were the, the first open source company they, they were dealing with. They didn't have a process to, to work with us. Uh, now they have a special division that uh, takes care of uh, open source assets in their company. They are installing Fosology. Uh, they are uh, giving trainings to other divisions in the company. Uh, for that, even if we are really not involved in that effort, it's a success because they are expanding the use of open source through the, the, the whole company. So uh, we work this way because we are convinced it's, it's really the most productive and cost effective. Uh, we do have to work with uh, privative uh, drivers with uh, closed source in, in some projects and it's really a pain. So whenever we can work the, with a whole open source stack, it's much, much better for us. And one way to prove it is to have hard code numbers that prove that we are more efficient that way, that we spend less and we provide more value to our customer that way. So, as I said, if we do it well, it, it makes a big economic sense for us and for our customers. Um, we use open source and we maintain it too. Within the company we have uh, many people who are either packagers or maintainers of, of different projects. Um, and everyone in our company uses Linux and, and uses open source tools. Uh, we use LibreOffice, for example. Uh, of course, uh, we maintain it. Um, we use uh, Spargo Share, GitLab, and, and we contribute whenever we find a bug. It's not like we report it to IT. We usually try to report it directly to a project and, and provide a, a patch for it. Um, and we um, help our customers build products with it, and we know that any patch that goes in improves the end result. And, and we collaborate with other companies to do the same. So, some common problems that we encounter along the way. Uh, customer projects have uh, tight deadlines and budgets. Um, they may not see if they're new, uh, what's the value in upstreaming? Why are we wasting time um, providing value for someone else and not our project? Um, and we have to educate our customer how that works. How how the whole workflow works. Okay, we do it now uh, for the project and we'll receive probably 10 times the value in the next release. As such, we, we do have to do the homework in our side. So upstreaming cannot be an afterthought in our plans. Uh, it has to be uh, part of the whole project plan and we know sometimes it's 
hard to justify. It's usually easier to justify when it's a long-term project that will see many release uh, uh, and it, it's easier to fit there. But you have to plan it from the start. How, what, what's the relationship going to be with uh, upstream projects and how they will fit into your overall project plan? So, as I said, we are a service-based company. We are a consultancy company. And every project for us is really important. We have to make it profitable. Um, we have to break, at least break even. We have to be able to afford the cost of the people providing that services. We basically sell people's hours to our customers, one way or the other. Uh, so we don't have a a cash cow product, something that we just can't rely that we'll sell licenses or whatever and money will just keep pouring in. We sell hours, we sell work of their people. And we also don't have a big marketing budget, so our best reputation is uh, basically like GitHub, uh, uh, it's there in GitHub, in OpenHub, in the kernel mailing list, that's our biggest marketing. Uh, also, people in conferences uh, providing yeah, knowledge and, and giving trainings or workshops. Um, that's the, the best asset we have to uh, go out and, and promote the company. So, how do we, do we prepare? Do we have to assess the project, uh, check how much it overlaps with upstream projects, um, so are we, for example, are we providing a distro for a customer? Does it, uh, uh, is, is there an a existing distro that we can use as a model? Can we leverage, I don't know, OpenSUSE? Can we leverage uh, Debian? Um, is it just packaging? So can we use uh, OBS to prepare those packages? Uh, are we going to use it intensively? how much of them of an overlap is there with uh, existing projects and do we, will we have to add new features or is it just customizing and, and setting up for the project, for the customer? Um, we have to assess the customer's attitude. Is he willing, is he able, does he have a, enough uh, budget to uh, help contribute? Does he understand uh, open source? and also what's the relevance of the project for us. Uh, so is it just a drive-by, uh, yeah, I don't know, 80-hour project that uh, for a customer that's just going to go away, or is it an, a strategic project? Is it something that is really important for us? I don't know, is it um, one of those new buzzwords that the company CEO is going to be interested in? Uh, is it something that we can market later? Um, is it part of a, maybe it's a really small feature, but it's, I don't know, one building brick in a, a, a very important feature that is going to be uh, really relevant for us later. Um, there are some examples for us. Uh, we work, for example, in uh, low latency for multimedia and there were very small building blocks in many different projects that came together at one point, and we were able to uh, then offer our, our customers uh, zero copy pipelines of uh, multimedia that were not possible before. So, uh, for example, we have to sit down with the customer, and this is even before selling the project. Uh, we have to ask the customer, what licenses can we use? Can we upstream the code? This is going to be public. Can we mention upstream when we are working with them that is it, this is going to be for you? Can we mention the project, uh, the product we are building? Can we discuss uh, specific use cases? Can we mention the hardware? Sometimes it's not the software that's, uh, that's confidential, it's the hardware. Um, like I don't know, we have a desktop computer, but it has a specific uh, video uh, card that we cannot mention to anyone until it's public, uh, it's released. 
Um, and while most of it, these things uh, should be in a statement of work, uh, should be designed, defined somewhere. And of course, any no that we get will add some difficulty to the process. Um, of course, a no to upstream code, uh, that's the worst situation. And in that case, uh, it's going to be very minimal and, and probably on our own time. Uh, and no to mentioning customer, the project, or hardware, uh, then upstream will lack the context to, to evaluate our, our, our effort, and uh, it, it's going to get more difficult. Um, I, I've been in projects that uh, has been like that for, I don't know, three, four years, and uh, we always go to upstream and say, okay, we want to do this, and they say, yeah, but why would you want to do that crazy stuff? And it, it gets very difficult. If, if you can't provide enough context, um, it, it's difficult. It's, in any case, every time there is a burden, uh, an extra burden on, on reviewing that patch. You have to do a lot of explaining to customer, uh, and that's an ongoing task. It's, it's an education that you have to, to do, um, and not a, just a, a single task in the, in the plan. Um, so you have to uh, coordinate with upstream, and if you can do that, you can get extra features uh, for your customer for free. So uh, that will, of course, improve the long-term maintenance. Uh, you can get better communication, um, better insight into the future of the upstream project, and uh, also get more influence in the direction. Okay. The more communication you can do, the more information that you can make flow between your customer and the uh, upstream projects it is better. Um, for example, I, I'm working right now on, on um, projects that are using Wayland, and uh, we are having like three different customers, and uh, it's like for different uh, vendors that are working together to provide the improvements to, to Wayland. And uh, one is working in Wayland itself. Uh, we are working on, um, on uh, hardware enablement for IMX6. Uh, the other vendor is working on Ednaviv. And we are all communicating and coordinating uh, through the, the project mailing list, uh, and it's all different customers, all different budgets, but the features are coming together and, and it's improving for everyone. Of course, all this gets easier when it's recurrent work, when it's, it's not just one time and, and it's a drive-by that I just, yeah, I need this specific feature and I'll just go away. It's easier when it's, even if it's for different customers, if we are um, steadily contributing to one project, we can coordinate, we can see that, and uh, e even inside the company, we try to stay together and stay in touch and say, okay, um, we're working on, on similar areas. Let's sync up every now and then and, and see how we can, we can do it better. Okay. Um, so even if it's not explicitly paid by the customer, can we um, can we get better value if we as upstream it? I mean, if it's, for example, a package that we have to maintain in a distro, in a Debian-based distro, is it better for us if instead of doing it just for us, we upstream it and, and we we provide this, uh, this package for Debian itself? Um, it's easy and uh, it's, I mean, it's not easy, it's, it's sensible to uh, analyze this and say probably in many, many times it's cheaper to just upstream it and get it from upstream. Uh, we just might have to check our workflow, make sure that it's, uh, it's easier than to, to get the package back. Um, 
but it, it will probably minimize the support cost. Maybe I find a problem and I see that someone else found it and already patched it the next time I, I check, okay? And for those, per, for those uh, features that cannot be upstream, uh, make sure that you document it. It's something that will, will be better later when, when you are analyzing the results of a project. Okay, upstreaming is not just one task. It's like I, I, I've been saying, it's, it's part of the whole, it has to be part of the, of the whole project and it's a process. So you have to plan it, you have to integrate it into what you do. Um, try to secure budget for it. Uh, try to account uh, for gains and expenses. Um, so you have to, you get the extra features, you get better support, uh, but you may also have extra effort and you also have some extra time spent upstream. It's, it's all part that, uh, of the project that has to be accounted for. Okay, so when you plan, you have to take into account uh, what upstream is, is doing. Um, even from the requirement definition, you have to uh, check out and say, okay, the customer is asking me for this feature, but maybe if we just tweak it a little, upstream will accept it and it will be easier for everyone. It, it happened to me several times. You just have to go back and forth and say, okay, you need this, maybe if we just tweak it, uh, we go this extra mile here and we change it here, uh, maybe it will be accepted by upstream and it will be easier for everyone, okay? Are you agree and uh, is it that important for you that it has to be this exact way? Uh, so, probably you can, you, you, you can do that, that play and, and get better results. And of course, um, that takes time and also that takes the adequate people. That's one of the, well, the most important things. The, the people is, is, as usual, as in every project, getting the right people is, is one of the, of the best assets of a project. Okay, so when you're planning, is this feature being worked by someone else? So get to know your project. You, you have to be aware of, of other people, what other people are, are doing. Can you go to those people and say, can we join efforts, you do this and do that, and we get it all together? Uh, can we delay part of that until someone else upstream it and then you add your feature on top? Um, so you have to communicate with upstream, you have to communicate with nearby projects, and of course you have to plan for contingency. If you are coordinating with someone else where you don't have control of those other projects, you have to plan for some contingency and it's always a, a balancing act. People allocation. So if possible, get people related to those upstream projects. It's much easier if, uh, if you, if upstream, receives those features from existing contributors. Uh, so if you don't, uh, if you can get those people, maybe you can get someone uh, involved from early start, start building the relationship and it has to be a true relationship. It, it, it's not pep talk. So you're dealing with people do it like, uh, like you really mean it and, and mean it. Okay, other tactics. Uh, get creative. Yes, it's not a waterfall project. You start here, you end up there. Be flexible. Be uh, try to think of other solutions that that can that could work. So, look at the budget sheet. Look at the calendar. See what you can shift around and uh, negotiate and, and negotiate more with other people. So you work on feature X, we work on Y, we both get both features, half the cost, everyone happy. Uh, 
you have to keep the customer on the loop. Every one of those creative plays, they have to be involved and, and they have to be aware of the risk. Things can fail and they have to be involved and, and, be, uh, and be aware of that. We are not magicians. It's, we are dealing with people, we're dealing with code, things can fail, okay? So, communication. Code is, of course, the best talk. It's the best proof of anything. Uh, so you have to get your developers to contributively provide uh, samples, provide tests. Uh, the quality is important. You don't go and just throw code over the fence and say, okay, yeah, we have this, and uh, you don't go get back to reply or to provide feedback. Okay. Um, so the talk in those cases is mostly in technical terms. The PM just take a step back, let the developers take the lead, give the talk, uh, provide as much context as possible, and as I said, build genuine relationships, no pet talk, no, no easy talk to just flatter someone and get results, okay? Build relationships. Requirements definition. Will this feature be accepted? Can we secure a maintainer to provide feedback? Um, can we tailor it? Can we break it down? Uh, if it's not possible to, uh, to get it accepted, can we just isolate those features that won't be accepted into very small patches and then deliver the rest and, and upstream it? Development. Um, be open about dependencies, um, keep in touch, get feedback. Um, you may have to plan for one version that works, another one that gets corrected later when you have uh, upstream feedback. Um, so you have to plan for review and fix times. Then um, testing. Uh, the projects may have different testing requirements plan for that, uh, try to leverage uh, the, the upstream continuous integration. Usually, most projects this day will have some kind of continuous integration. Try to leverage that, integrate early, and plan to have a uh, fix uh, for those, for any issues they found uh, promptly. Again, keep a close eye on what upstream is doing, uh, keep the customer in the loop, and be flexible. You may have like, uh, w you may be working on something that's completely unrelated and then uh, you see momentum building for a specific uh, feature that we, you'll need in, I don't know, six months. You, you don't need it now. But maybe if you just push it now a bit, uh, you'll get it done from other people and, and providing some support of your own and, and you can get it now. So be, be on the lookout for those opportunities. Then blog about what you are doing. Uh, that's a way to build also momentum and to get interest from other, other parties. And again, be as per transparent as possible. There is no PR stunt. Uh, that's not the intention. Be, uh, be open about what you are doing. Uh, get some interest for other people. And then, during the retrospective, uh, get the list of no done upstream patches and highlight the ones that are worth really having upstream and that you can, uh, you can get them integrated later. So, try to do it early, try to integrate uh, an upstream patches early, um, otherwise it's just wasted effort. And, so can we include it in a new project? Can we include it in a SQL? Uh, we do keep an internal company project for upstreaming. Uh, it's slowly, it's only a couple of hours a week, but try to get it up in the, in the QE early and, and try to yeah, get, it, uh, get it out there. And of course, try to get the uh, attention from developers at least a couple of hours a week 
uh, that's important. And I mentioned a couple of uh, examples. Um, this one is, is another one. Uh, so working in Chrome OS, people working in EndNavid, Mesa, uh, the Android open source project. Uh, we managed to get features at one third the cost for every project. Okay, so it works. It, it's really important to keep the communication open and, and work with other projects. And of course, experience. Experience is really good. It builds over time. Um, right now, I would say it's second nature for us, and uh, we get contracted to uh, upstream other companies' work. So it's good for everyone. We get more money. Customers provide more value. Uh, they get more value in return. Uh, so, and I think it's a model that works for for everyone. Okay, communicate a lot. Uh, show the value in upstreaming. Um, avoid throwing code over the fence. Be transparent. Be uh, sensible and be open about what you do. And of course, uh, keep track of what related projects are doing. Okay, thank you. Uh, sorry, it w I, I went very quickly. Uh, but if you have any questions, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. I'll. Talk to the, the um, two organizers. Uh, otherwise, I'll, I'll provide them on the company blog. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone.